Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, William Chow, and in today's episode, I'm going to go basically uh, do what we used to, one of the things that we used to do, and that was basically uh, read out or go through a manga. Okay. Now, you know, you may, that may sound kind of boring, like, you know, doing, it's not exactly just like taking out a book and just uh, reading the book out aloud. But it, indeed, it actually is um, a bit of a, of a visual and a bit of a, you know, kind of a, an audio sort of acting of the actual manga kind of thing. So, again, hard to explain. It was just something that um, that, that occurred when, uh, for example, Daisuke, um, one of my translators, uh, he got really, you know, basically very enthusiastic trying to basically, um, you know, share uh, some of the, you know, the comedy and that and some of the, uh, you know, the, the things that go on in various different mangas, okay? Now, I remember when it first started out with me, uh, you know, he'd, he'd always bring, let's say, like a Maison Ikaku. Um, I remember he also brought uh, Bloody Angels um, and, uh, you know, and, you uh, he bring those, uh, you know, to uh, UBC, and then he basically, uh, you know, basically, you know, kind of almost read me the pages. Not maybe not word for word, but you know, at least you know, sort of uh, in translated form. Uh, you know, tell me what the manga and that kind of stuff was about, and tell me some of these sort of the important actions that were sort of going on. So it's a little bit of uh, you know, sort of fill in the story, but also you know, do some of the dialogue that's actually in the book uh, to help. I remember. Um, when we went down to San Diego Comic Con, uh, Daisuke had um, a copy of Here's Greenwood, Kokoro Greenwood, and I remember we, you know, he was, uh, you know, basically showing different people. I remember Robert Gutierrez of Rama Project, and uh, and other people, uh, one of my other translators, uh, Anna Exter, um, you know, they got really interested in that manga as well. So, uh, you know, so basically, you know, this episode I'm going to take a, um, a funny story out of this uh, magazine here. This is uh, uh, Cyber Comics uh, number 16, okay? Um, and the particular interesting thing about this particular issue mm -hmm. is that uh, it has a really funny, uh, there you go, has a really funny story here uh, called uh, the uh, Neo Geon School for Non New Types, okay? And uh, I'll go through that story with you, alright? So, Let's begin. Okay, so today's manga that we're doing is basically uh, it's a part of a you know an anthology collection called Cyber Comics, and uh, this one is from uh, issue number sixteen. Um, the story I'm doing is gonna is called basically uh, you know, we affectionately call it the Neo Geon School for Non New Types. Okay. And it's written by a fairly famous, um, um, you know, kind of sort of, uh, you know, but yet sort of a hidden uh, manga artist named uh, um, Koichiro Yasunaga. Okay, um, one of the most, uh, you know, popular things at this time that he um, that he draws in the manga for is a, is a, is a manga called um, uh, Katsuru uh, Chiki Boyo Gun, which is, uh, you know, we you know affectionately call the Perfectual Earth Defense Force. Okay, it's a pretty fun, it's, a, it's a pretty funny uh, OEVA if you if you want to go ahead and have a take a look for it. Um, we didn't fan sub this one, but you know it, it, you know there are fan sub copies of that uh, running around on VHS at the time that we were doing this. Okay, um, the other uh, sort of uh, you know very famous um, manga that that, um, that this guy does is uh, he, he he has a superhero kind of you know, comedy manga, uh, non hentai. Okay. Um, called Anal Man, all right, and uh, you know th th it's a kind of a strange story, but uh, basically you know it's the concept of you know this guy. Um, I think the probably the closest analogy I have is um, you know it's not like Superman because Superman has his abilities whether or not he wears the Superman costume, right? So obviously you know either either as Clark Kent or as you know as Superman, he still has his Superman abilities, right? Um, so this particular um, you know, you know, uh, character, um, um, you know, gets this alien suit, okay, uh, which will give him superpowers. But the problem is, if he's not wearing the suit, then he doesn't have superpowers. So, uh, you know, uh, so the greatest, you know, um, um, analogy that I can give you is uh, is an old uh, um, TV series called The Greatest American Hero, where the, basically the aliens came and gave Ralph a suit. And um, so when he puts on the super suit, he 
he then has the superpowers, right? Um, so similar thing in this, uh, you know, in, in um, this manga, Angel Man, um, you know, this alien, um, you know, basically, if he comes and covers the the character's body, then you know the, the character has his superpowers, okay? But the problem is that you know, you know, when he doesn't, you know, but you know, he has to, you know, get the or you know, basically not cover his body uh, in order to look normal. Um, so uh, you know, he, but he has to have the ability to, you know, or the alien, for example, to, you know, that that, that controls the alien, has to, you know, reside within the person. So you know, they have to basically be able to basically cover the guy's body, and then when he doesn't want it, he has to basically go inside the guy's body, so he can, you know, you know, kind of pick his choice of openings in in the human body. And you can see by the title, you, you can figure out which opening he decides to use. Okay, so we've been getting with the uh, front page, and uh, you may notice the, uh, the muscle-bound guys, and the uh, and uh, you know he also likes to draw hairy legs. So uh, you know his uh, interpretation of uh, you know the aniki is uh, is, is pretty uh, pretty funny. Okay, the year is. 0080 and the uh, Zeons are basically losing the war uh, against uh, well both the Titans and the uh, Ayug and so uh, here we are on side three and uh, they are going to the basically the Neo Geon school okay and so I'm going to just paraphrase a little bit here um, so here the teacher uh, or the you know the master is going basically having a speech in front of his uh, uh, students here, um, or the new recruits. Um, he's basically going that uh, you know the MS pilots. We're going to train you to be MS pilots, and the reason is because uh, you know the, they're getting their asses uh, kicked by the uh, uh, by the you know by the new types, and so basically they have to train pilots to fight against the new types. And uh, you know these you know these uh, candidates are have been selected to be trained to be MS pilots. Okay, now we go basically to um, a bunch of guys uh, getting ready to do a running exercise and you can tell that uh, you know this guy loves drawing hairy legs and so basically it's uh, wah, sa, wah, sa, basically running um, uh, like, like on a track. However, it's not a track, it's basically the uh, inside wall of the si uh, space station or basically the atmospheric level of the space station and here they are the uh, runners are running uh, and they're being um, basically followed by their teacher uh, who is actually wearing a spacesuit and uh, riding the motorcycle around behind them as he's uh, chasing them with the uh, the boken uh, as they're you know being paced around the uh, uh, the uh, track on the inside line of the uh, space station and then all of a sudden there's a, a big lightning strike up there because this is the atmospheric level and then you know, the other thing goes BOOM! WAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAA
Uh, and then you know, he asks him, uh, you know, do what? And then he goes, yeah, it, you know, it's it's not really, it's not really, but it's it's. I can't operate anything that has more than three buttons. I think what? He goes, oh my god. You can't operate one of the three buttons? I remember the time where I got trapped in an elevator. And he goes, Oh, you got me beat. I can't even operate a CD player. And he goes, Wow, you guys are so incredible. And he says, Best I can do is five buttons. He goes, Oh, you guys, I thought it was just me. You guys are great. He goes, Oh, yes. I said, No, don't worry about it. You're just like us. Okay, so then they continue. With the uh, teacher, te you know, doing some lessons uh, outside the space station, and as time continues, uh, you know, they're uh, uh, here. They are eating lunch uh, outside uh, the space station, and then uh, they are here. They are they're doing uh, some uh, reentry practice uh, using pillows uh, as well. Uh, but as uh, the Federation uh, you know, starts advancing towards axes, uh, and so they have to get ready for um, deployment. Okay, students, uh, today is a special day. We've uh, talked to uh, the uh, mobile suit development team and we've uh, developed a new mobile suit for you. Everyone, this is the MSDD Zack. Yeah, Domo. Boom. What the hell is that? This is our new DD Zaku, and uh, the, you'll notice the little words uh, by the DD means direct drive. Okay, and the guys are all amazed. Direct drive? Yes, we have to design a system that will give a uh, one-to-one -one response ratio. So. When you're when you move your body uh, left and right, the, the machine will move left and right. When you move your arms up, the the machine will move up. And we've even simplified all the systems so that uh, we'll improve in performance. And we're also developing the DD Goof and the DD Dumb, and uh, we also have the DD Gelgoog as well for you guys. He goes. And the other guy's like so surprised. He's going, "What? You can't expect us to be you know, to go out in those things, right, guys? Wow, this thing is so light. And hey, this thing has no buttons. Arigato, arigato, thank you, thank you." And the boss going, "Ah ha ha! See, they love it." Hey, you better be careful. You might get uh, stuck with the DD Ziong. Oh yeah, right. I'm very careful. I understand. I hate this. I'm hating this. Sensei, I think I've got the, the wrong uh, small size here. Oh, that's okay. That's for showing off your ab muscles. Oh, yeah, that's right. Ha 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 ha. Boy, you guys. You may notice the gog sitting there um, pointing up with the arrow waving his hand. Okay guys, gonna open up the door. Take a deep breath. <laughs> what? You killed 300 Zacks? Yes, really. I killed them. There's 300 of them in them. Stop lying. It says, Captain, stop it! Okay, so this is obviously a reference to uh, Captain Harlock. And if you notice the little mark on his face, the marking on his face says, Railroad. And you may also notice that he's wearing uh, the skull on his pants. That's also kind of a, a side reference to what the uh, uh, Skull Squadron VF-1 is. Right in the cockpit. Whoa, ha, 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 ha. We survived a bazooka shot. Ha, ha. Next time, let's try Mega Particle Beam. Says, wow, you guys. 
All right, what you want to do is go down below, click like, click subscribe, and then you'll get more sort of uh, things out of archives and more funny stories and convention stories. All right, so until next time, see you again.